Hello and welcome back to the F-18 Flight School series. We're continuing to do our quality control for the missions that I've made for this uh, to hopefully get this published at some point. Um, the mission for this one, is, it's the same as what we did in the last video. I've made a correction of moving, I think, and we actually moved this in the last video. We moved the fighters a little bit closer to make it so that uh, by the time we're done with all of the instructions on how to do the uh, multi-target BVR that we're talking about here, the, the, the TWS mode, uh, by the time you get through with all of those instructions, they should be close enough by then for you to actually start locking them up. Uh, my disclaimer for this is is that I have an issue, or I have a hard time dealing with the radar, especially in the F-18. It, it, it just feels like I have to wait until I'm almost right on top of them before things start to show up. Uh, but we're going to give this another shot. I'm gonna, I mostly just want to test to see if... Uh, the narrations will be done right around the same time as we're ready to start engaging these guys. So unfortunately, that does mean that... Oh, and the other thing is, is I did go ahead... Respond. I did go ahead and make these guys not do anything. I'm not really trying to have... I don't want you to have to fight them. I just want you to learn how to use the TWS system and take out enemies. So... Um, we kind of learned the basics of missile evasion in the last one. If you're in a situation where you're going to be using TWS, realistically, you're probably not actually fighting anything. You're taking out multiple targets at a distance. Uh, uh, inferior, that's the word I was looking for. Inferior aircraft that don't really have a chance against you. You're just taking them out in a bunch of things. If you're fighting something that's equivalent to you, you're probably going to be using the single target um, RWS system because you need that lock to stay on there really well. So... I just wanted to make sure I made that clear. I did turn off the the aggression for these guys to make it so that, uh, you know... Oh, I keep forgetting. I always got to make sure I put my throttle in because we're not going to be able to go anywhere without a throttle. That kind of helps. Had a little bit of a moment there. Okay, 285 is the heading we're going for. Alright, get over here. I don't, uh, because for the purposes of expediting our takeoffs, I just take off on the taxiway. In real, in a real, if you were doing this for real, you would practice doing it the right way. I'm not doing it for real. We're doing it for testing purposes. So, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do this. <laughs> All right, let's get our heading select set up. Let's get ourselves in air air mode. We'll get our AMRAMs selected. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in TWS mode because why not? I'm going to leave it at 40 because um, I'm pretty sure that anything beyond 40, we're not really going to be able to pick up. I need to remember to turn on our data link. Um, I'm, I, I don't know. I think I might have a problem with uh, my AWACS. I, there's, I think there might be a setting on the AWACS that I'm not necessarily turning on the right way. I would I would have assumed that the, if any time you assign something AWACS duty, it would just send the information out to everybody. But realistically, if the AWACS is picking up these guys, I should see them as a contact on here uh, that's being shared via the data link as long as I remember to turn it on. And it just it doesn't always show up. So I'm not really sure what the problem there is. It's kind of annoying. All right, so we're, we we all we listen to all we, we listen to this all last time, and I generally don't listen to these again, even in my own time, because I already know what they say. But because this is a more of a timing thing, we kind of have to sit and listen to them because I I needed to actually take the time so that we know where the aircraft are going to be. Because if if we're getting there too early. If we're getting there too early before the instructions are done, I need to move them a further away so it takes them longer to get towards us. Oh, wait. I need to adjust my... <clears throat> okay, we did that already. So my goal for this, I, I know it's hard to listen to two things at the same time. The if you want to if you want to hear the narrations, you can go back and watch the previous video. The goal for this is that I want the narration to be finished, and then as soon as the narration is done, you see targets on the screen that you can go after. So 
this is one of the reasons I've been struggling with working on these because for the most part, you can't really just, it, it takes a lot of time to get things like this done because especially if you're doing something that's time sensitive like this, you, you, there can be only one. <laughs> uh, because you have to sit through it and take the time to make sure that the timing lines up. There's really no, well, I mean, I guess, I mean, I guess we could fast forward through the, we could fast forward a little bit. I mean, yeah, we can, we can at least speed the time up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it sounds like a chipmunk, but I don't know. Okay, so I'm curious. Uh, I forget how to do a. How do I? Mm. Oh, okay. How far away are they right now? Oh, they're still a hundred miles away. So yeah, they're still over a hundred miles away. Uh, hold on, what am I trying to get? F one. F. Hello, F one. Back to the cockpit, please. Thank you. Uh, well, be alt here. I can't imagine that they're going to show up on my thing here because I, I don't know. I think I'm missing something with the data link because at the data link, at the, I have to imagine that the AWACS would be able to see these guys, right? So I'm not really sure. I, I'm missing something here. I think it might make sense to actually move the aircraft a little bit, another block, like maybe another whole grid closer um, because, you know, we want to be, we want to be relatively close, at least within 80 miles by the time this is done. So... Yeah, I, th I think it might make sense for me to just go ahead and let's go ahead and quit. We'll head back to the mission editor and then we will move these guys. We're going to move these guys maybe right here. And I'm moving them down further to the south because uh, to change the narration, to change the heading that I have us set on, I'd have to re-record the entire narration, and it's easier just to relocate these guys to a place where the heading that we're flying on would make them more likely to come across our path. So I'm going to do it that way. And then, um, so I'm not really sure. Let's see, our, our AWACS here. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that, I'm assuming that um, this AWACS action is... And I think the EPLRS is what we need for that, right? I don't I don't think there are any reaction to threat radar using. I don't know. I, I mean I probably should look it up, but um Yeah. Uh give me a second. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go look up mission editor AWAX and make sure that I, I have all the settings correct on this. But I mean I would you would assume by default that putting an AWAX down would just have it have everything it's supposed to have. I don't know. I'll be right back. Let me just verify the minimum I need for my F-18 to be able to use the data link. All right. From the reading that I did, it seems like these two things are the only things I should have to have um, to make that work. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this here and then I'm going... Oh. No, I don't... Mm hmm. All right, sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to do that. Where's the uh, start in route task AWACS? All right, so we're just going to add an orbit 
an orbit option here. Um, orbit. And then racetrack orbit. 25,000 feet should be pretty reasonable. We're going to put this at uh, 350 knots, just because why not? So, yeah, the, these two things right here, uh, I guess you can't see them. The, e, the AWACS option and the EPLRS option uh, are the, supposed to be the things that actually give you data link and then just have them orbit uh, at waypoint one. So, or actually, just delete waypoint one and just have him orbit like right here just to make sure we're having data link. All right. So hopefully that's going to make more sense now. Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to make any sense, but we move the guys closer. So hopefully by the time we're done with all of the narrations and stuff, um, we'll have guys on the radar ready to go. Cause I don't want to waste people's time having to go find these guys. I, the, the purpose of this is not, Oh, you know what? While being able to fight single targets effectively is important. In general, you will only be doing this when dealing with aircraft with equipment or superior technological capability. In many cases, okay. you'll be dealing with less capable aircraft that can be more easily defeated with your weapons. In these situations... I do have head tracking available. It's just for this air-to-air -air stuff, you don't generally need it. Get yourself in the air I think I do have a dogfighting lesson in an, in another in another lesson or two but uh we don't really need it for that oh uh, that's right get our uh oh get our heading set 285 enter autopilot heading select get ourselves on heading get our ip set get our fuel flow Okay. It's hard to tell where it is in the narration, so you got to listen carefully. The undesignated keybind will unlock the target. To remove your locks, you need to press the reset button on the right side of the MDI. One of the nice features of TWS mode is that because you're not fixed... potential issue if they start defending since you won't give any when firing in TWS oh, we're starting to see something here I think we're starting to see something we had a little cross there that was telling me that we were seeing something So where are the guys? So yeah. So now we're at least. Yeah, we're within six. All right. So I think I think the distance that we have set now is probably pretty reasonable. So we'll leave it. Oh, I forgot to switch it to twiz mode. the targets, the missiles will eventually switch to their own internal guidance and you can go cold. Okay, so we now have your locks. The missiles will automatically switch to internal guidance and try to find their targets on their own. Oh, reset everything. Okay, so the only problem with uh, my current solution is, is that I can't really see anything. So we only have the one guy here. So he, and I don't think I'm actually targeting him. Because I don't think, well, we don't, because I think all we're having is a data link lock right now, right? Like, I can't target him until I have a full symbol. So it's kind of a no... Alright, here we go. Oh, what? Let's 
So I'm not sure. We have a four bar scan here. Sorry, right, wrong wrong slider. So yeah, we're we're getting real close to this guy to these guys, and I'm not. And now my radar's lost them. So there's I, I don't there's something I'm clearly not understanding about the F-18 radar. That. Uh, Yeah, I'm. I'm. I, there's something I don't understand about the radar that uh, is causing this. Because I had them on radar for a second. There was no way for me to know. Like, they didn't slide off my radar or anything. So I don't. I mean, I get that the 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 rotating bar is, uh, you know, kind of the 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 sliding back and forth bar, is where my radar is seeing. So. It's the only thing about TWS mode that kind of sucks. Where are they? Yeah, I'm basically like right on top of them. So, yeah, I think I was getting a data link track, but I'm not getting the full symbol, which means my radar's not picking them up, and I don't I don't understand why. I mean, it's on, right? Yeah, radar is operational. So, yeah, there's there's something that I'm missing about the whole what am I looking for? There's something that I'm missing about the whole radar thing. Because realistically, I should be able to see them right now. Does the map tell me? Oh, it's two flights of two. I forgot about that. So does it tell me how high they are? No. But yeah, I mean, I should be able to see something, right? So yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I guess I need to go back and watch the uh I need I need to go back and watch another video on this because I thought I had this I I'm just missing something. I'm definitely missing something and I'm not sure what it is. Because there should be something happening right now like Yeah. Like there should be there should be something. There should be something showing up here. I'm I'm vaguely f I'm I'm following them pretty much. And, you know, I mean I I guess what is cl But realistically, with as far out as they were and the elevation settings that I had at the time, like I should be able to Yeah. Um my disclaimer for all of these videos is is I'm I'm making this flight campaign because the training videos just don't do it for me. I need I need something a little bit more I need something a little bit more in uh inclusive or whatever. All right. Um So this is it's clearly one of those things I, I'm I'm content now. I'm content now that the mission works. This is more just user error. I don't know what I'm I don't know enough about 
operating the radar myself because uh, any as long as any of these units become damaged which means that you were able to track them you were able to fire your missiles off and at least one of these got hit meaning you successfully used the TWS mode then you're good um, then you go back and you land just like every other mission. So I'm confident that the rest of the mission works. I don't really need to do any more quality control for this because mostly I just wanted to make sure that the narration finished right around the time that these guys were getting close enough for you to start doing something. So this seems to be pretty good. We're going to go ahead and call this mission done uh, because it's it's me. It's me not knowing how to work the radar properly or, for, or having forgotten how to work the, ra the radar in TWS mode. So... It is what it is. I just I need a little bit more experience and uh, and all of that with the with the radar itself and figuring out the best uh, best practices for actually finding an object out there, getting my radar to actually find it, um, getting to getting the data link to work the way it seems to work when I'm watching somebody like Growling Sidewinder and something like that. Um, I just there, there's clearly details that I'm missing that I need to figure out. But uh, as far as the mission goes, this should allow anybody who's brand new and doesn't understand the concept to be able to go through this, target a bunch of different stuff, and then you know figure all of that out. So that's it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the mission. Uh, be sure to click the like button, subscribe to help us reach 10,000 subscribers. Join as a member to support our work here, or you can just leave the uh, a tip with the thanks button. Be sure to come back for our next mission, which is going to be... I, I didn't change anything. Which is going to be uh, oh IR missiles. So this will be the uh, we're, we'll we'll be getting up and close up close and personal and learning how to shoot IR missiles, and then dogfighting will be after that. Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much. Be sure to come back for the next mission, and I'll see you then.